It's perfect, it solves everything. And this is how you can tell I'm bad at naming things. Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And as most of y'all know, I'm currently working on a YA fantasy novel for NaNoWriMo. <sighs> I'm on draft three. The draft where I'm, you know, merging a couple characters, adding in description, and based off of the title, you might have guessed, trying to flesh out my world building. This is hard. It's fun, but it's hard. And I think part of that is because I want the world to be so immersive. And the goal is to have it almost feel like a character itself. I want to ground the reader in my novel. The setting plays a huge part of that. And I just wanted to make it feel very real. And to be honest, as I'm rereading through, it doesn't yet. It doesn't. There are some big things that I still need to do to help that. I have some places to name, some foods to name, always with the naming. And this vlog is going to focus on all of that. Also, I have to draw another map. Yes, because things have changed and I need a new one. <laughs> Now, normally I travel a lot and that helps spur on a lot of my world building. Just looking at things through a different lens, things that feel very new to you, I think helps you, you know, flesh stuff out and ground things. Um, but of course we can't do that right now. I've talked about this a lot before, but while I'm stuck inside, I figured I could, you know, travel through books, take my inspiration from my current reads. So we're going to the TBR shelf. The other two are on my phone. Should I throw my phone? Let's see if this will work. Nope. <laughs> the other two are Becoming by Michelle Obama and Beach Read by Emily Henry. You might be noticing this is a strange assortment of books. Lots of different genres. What's up with that? Beach Read takes place at the beach. <laughs> I'm currently on chapter nine of this book and it's clear that the beach is playing some emphasis. Not a whole lot, but it's kind of nice having it there in the background. And I like the descriptions of it. Then I have this audiobook read by Michelle Obama talking about her life. And it's, you know, she grew up in significantly different circumstances than I did, than I will ever experience. So it's interesting to see the world through her eyes, hear it in her own voice, but also just this beginning part where she's talking about growing up in Chicago. Chicago's already one of my favorite cities in the world, which I was working on Project Death when I was in Chicago last two, <laughs> back during draft two, but <sighs> anyway, The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson is almost aspirational in some ways. I've actually found it hard to read this at times while working on Project Death because it's also a fantasy with its own huge massive world, but of course it's extra massive, but I love how it influences everything, how the world truly is a character in its own right. So it's aspirational, but there's also some differences in that this is a multi-book series, whereas mine needs to be completely self-contained in this one novel. And then Bleach. I'm actually on volume two. I put this up in my TBR shelf when I first created it, so I'm glad to finally be getting to it. I'm hoping that the different medium will help a lot here and that seeing the visual imagery as part of the storytelling will help me to better describe my world. And I'm also going to be traveling through Japan via taste thanks to today's sponsor, Boxu. I'm so excited for this. I think it's a great gift for writers and world builders alike, especially right now when we can't travel. And also I just love food. <laughs> Boxu is a monthly snack box subscription service that delivers original assortments of premium Japanese these snacks and tea pairings. The box that I'm opening is the first month box, introducing you to Boxu, and it's themed as Seasons of Japan. It comes with this incredible cultural guide with a map, super helpful for me and my world building inspiration needs, to let you know more about your snack origins, ingredients, and even allergens. Every month you'll receive a box with a different theme, so the snacks will always be something new, like a gourmet journey through Japan each month, and it also ships directly from Japan. So if you're interested, you can get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack box from Boxu and save up to $47 using my code and link in the description box down below. But first, Hanami Dango is a variety of sticky rice dumplings commonly enjoyed during the spring Hanami flower viewing season. This tray of Dango is covered in sugar and colored in the traditional pink, white, and green. Flavor sweet. Volume two. Okay, I had to use <laughs> this as a mark. Jigai, a temporary body used by weakened soul rapers. Rikia currently inhabits one. This is the kind of thing that as a reader really immerses me into the world where I'm like, oh yeah, of course a Jigai, that's yeah, a temporary body used by weakened soul rapers. What else would it be? <laughs> you know, like it pulls me in and that's what I need to use in my own project death. So, 
So I should get to that. You know, it's so much easier when you're reading it than when you have to come up with it yourself. <laughs> Start streaming. Hello, everyone. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done with the first spring. So I was remembering that this is the Seasons of Japan box because I wanted to check out the chips that I'd eaten. The Super Mojo Plum. Because Project Death is like a desert landscape. And so I realized that as I was having people reference things, um, they would reference back a particularly bad sandstorm. So like some of the characters joke about that or mark time in that way. I'm still kind of trying to figure out another way I could mark it as I think this season shouldn't change altogether too much. But this is making me think about that a little bit more, especially because the actual length of the story probably takes place over the span of like three weeks if I had to guess so seasonally it wouldn't matter but it should theoretically be important for me the writer to know. Hmm. Okay so I'm listening to Becoming by Michelle Obama and she has this whole wonderful story about her love of music and where it all started influences and within her family and it's reminding me that in Project Death, I have a whole scene early on in the sticks that talks about um, music, and this is the drums rather than the piano or jazz. But I'm trying to think of a way, as I'm going to be rewriting most of it, especially the back end of it, how I can bring back the music element, because I always love when you can circle back around to something, even something that seems inconsequential. I think that I could also somehow pull this with the love interest. It's the beginning of an idea. Anyways, it's time to mask up and go shopping real quick. And then, as a reward, bubble tea. <laughs> Good morning. It's 6.48. I just woke up. I had an epiphany about the story. Not about the world building. The thing that I worked on all yesterday. But about the plot. I had this character of the prince. So computer, I need to write this down before I forget. <laughs> Actually, when it's something as huge as this, I usually don't forget it. Because I'm just like, it's perfect. It solves everything. How did the story ever exist without this in it, you know? All right, 120 words of new material, and that new material will probably count for another 5,000 words or so. Hi, bud. Did you finish your food? I guess technically the world building might have helped with this because this is revolving the prince character that I needed to merge into other characters or like find a way to get rid of. But now I have a way to merge the parts that uh, almost don't matter, but keep the integrity of the character in place, which is what I couldn't figure out how to do. And it has a lot to do with trading names, which we've seen one aspect of in my story already. We're going to see another one, but this third one, Revolving the Prince, I think it's going to work out so well. Zelda. And I think it's nice to have that third one. So it's like partially the world, partially the God of Death, partially the religion there. I don't know. I don't know. Does this help me actually name anything? No. But does it super help the story? Yes. Oh, my tea is boiling. Boil, let cool, infuse tea back for 90 seconds. Stop it. I swear one of the most interesting things about world building sometimes is if I'm gonna make up a name for something, it also can't be a real thing. <laughs> 
So I was trying to come up with the name for this river. So the river is dying out in the sticks. So you can see there's like some kind of naming convention. I have the sticks. Everyone refers to the capital as the capital. We have the desolate forest that goes along the path to the capital. And then there's this river that runs through the sticks. It actually runs all the way up to the capital, but it's been, it's dying, right? So I wanted it to be a joke that once upon a time, you know, there used to be all this water. So what would you call it now that would be the opposite of a dying river? So I came up with the Cascades and then I had to Google it, which is a band. Um, the other thing I Googled was, and this is how you can tell I'm bad at naming things. So ERIB, which apparently is the International Requirements Engineering Board. I'm gonna imagine there's not too much crossover with my story and this, so it'll be okay to use that. So my main character is named Tuovi. There's other characters where I'm using um, size and cool, Vihu Carther. That's kind of the feel of the names. And so I was like, I need a fruit because this is specifically referenced uh, and it's something that they don't have out in the sticks. And Tuovi's like, whoa, I love this fruit. Kind of, you know, it's like a, that's, that's the experience is like, there's something new about so I was like, how do I make up a name for a fruit that doesn't exist, uh, that can't be anything close to existing? So I did berry backwards, but one R and an I instead of a Y. So it's Irib. Irib. Or International Requirements Engineering Board. You know, you gotta do what works. And I think it works. This is good for now. There's still gonna be a lot of other things I need to name, but really I'm trying to infuse the world in this draft as I add more descriptions, as I sort of ground the reader in that this is a real place. Even if I haven't yet gotten used to Europe in the Cascades. All right, bud, you ready to go to the vet? No. I'm gonna listen to Becoming while I take him to the vet. Let's get on the road. I know, bud, I know and many of us gravitated toward the center during our free time. Among them was Suzanne Aleli. Suzanne was tall and thin with thick eyebrows and luxurious dark hair that fell. All right, it is now Wednesday morning, about 30 minutes before my Twitch stream. Duke is doing just fine after his vet appointment. Bubby's over there. <laughs> Little Zelda's over there. Oh. I actually made a note to myself, I had to check. When I was listening to Michelle Obama's Becoming, it was a very long drive yesterday, so I got through like three hours of it. But there's this point where she talks about um, a memory she has at this old school and she calls the chairs puke green chairs and she says everything from that decade, the color was just puke green. And it reminded me of something that Brandon Sanderson said in his world building lecture series, where it's like, if you just describe one thing in detail, then you can almost gloss over the rest. And I find that to be very true for me. In fact, it was on a different Twitch stream where I was trying to look something up midstream. We were just all kind of wondering about this. And when I looked at the Google definition, there was just like five different descriptors and my mind went numb from it because I was like, I blank on descriptions after like the third or fourth adjective. I'm like, so, her describing this puke green really pulled me into the scene that she was trying to like, you know, explain and recreate for me, the reader, and it worked so well. So that's what I think I'm gonna try and do as I'm attempting to infuse more description, is just focusing on describing one thing solidly, and then I can kind of gloss over the rest. So if I can get the feeling of this one thing, you should be able to feel the whole thing. Yes. I'm at 9,631 words today, so I'm hoping I will be able to finish this scene, do some of that description. As I was writing this the other day, this isn't exactly description, but I realized that something was wrong or the growing number of people surrounding, or the growing. I always feel better when I can replace it with one word. <laughs> Hello everyone, I think I'm live. Okay, so I ended that with 572 words and I made sure to focus on the one thing, the sun, the blistering heat. I talk about how it's cracking their lips. I talk about sort of the clothes they have to wear in order to cover themselves from the sun. You know, I'm not describing the dunes in this scene. I'm not really describing the sticks or like 
the Capitol. I'm not even describing the walk there as much as I'm describing this like oppressive heat beating down on them. And I try to do it so that I've taken the whole scene and I use different parts of it to describe that. And I hope that gives it more of a feel. I think if I just continue on this path, it'll feel more real than it does right now. I think it'll give the readers a better mental image, which is really all I'm hoping to do. Better mental image and feeling real. So while I can't put any of my books up yet as finished reading, like I got through two chapters of Bleach Volume 2, I got through like six chapters of Becoming, I did manage to read one chapter of Be Tree last night. So it's kind of nice, this is the first NaNoWriMo where I've really tried to implement reading alongside my writing and you know what? Now that I'm on the lookout for the world building, it's like I see ways to improve it everywhere, which I think is a good thing. I'm just trying to infuse it in this draft. So please do comment down below. Let me know how you infuse your world building. At what point are you building up your world? Do you do all of that before you start drafting? Like me, do you kind of layer it in each draft as you go? Let me also know if you've learned like what your best tip is about world building and building up something that feels concrete. Let me know which book stands out to you as having the most fleshed out world or the world that you want to jump into and why you think that is. But that is going to be it for me. Thank Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again to Boxu for sponsoring this video and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Julie Mariuki, Tasha Askin, Hazel Faze, Sue Hong, Alex Stewart, Renee Strength, Hannah Ray, also Royce and Shy. I'm so sorry for passing you over as I was reading. Thank you so much. Kelly Marie Theodorakis, Anna Amaral, Amanda Gray, and Natalie Waits. And I will see you all very soon with a new video. Bye. Oh man. Oh. Oh.